Okay, the following is an introduction to solving nonlinear equations using Excel. Previously, we saw how to use, for linear systems, the mmult and m inverse functions, and also the goal seek and solver functions. Uh, here we'll talk a little bit more about how uh, some different methods for solving these equations by hand and another nice feature that Excel offers. So the first one here, as shown, is called fixed point iteration. And we'll illustrate this method using the Colebrook equation, which is used to find uh, the power required to pump a fluid through a pipe. This equation is given here, as we've seen before, the, the unknown in this equation is f, and it's a nonlinear implicit equation in f. We can't solve analytically for it. Uh, for convenience, uh, we can call, because 1 over the square root of f appears on the left and also inside the argument of the log, we can call 1 over the square root of f uh, our unknown just for convenience. So in this case, I'll call, I'll, we'll just write x equals minus 2 log 10 epsilon over d over 3.7 plus 2.51 times x over Reynolds number. Once we've found x, then we can recover f uh, from x equals uh, 1 over the square root of f. This form is particularly nice. It has the form of x equals some function of x. And because of this, we can solve it uh, iteratively. So if we guessed a value for x and then evaluated this right sa right hand side, what we get out is an updated value for x. So you put an x in, you get a new x out. And if you just repeat that over and over, um, the value might converge to the corresponding solution. So to solve this problem iteratively, we guess a value for x, we stick that value into this right-hand side function, and we evaluate it, and what comes out is the new value of x. So we guess x0, evaluate the function, that gives us x1, then evaluate the function on x1, that gives us x2, evaluate the function on x2, that gives us x3, and we repeat until the x's uh, stop changing. Um, that's a really nice function to try, uh, a nice solution approach to try. Let's try it um, on that problem, the Colebrook problem, where we're given the values for epsilon, d, and the Reynolds number, as shown here in this box, and then the solution is just given here. So here in the green cell, I've just written 5 as an initial guess for x. Then in the next cell, we simply type in this function. And when we see the x, we just make it refer to the previous value. So in this cell, we have minus 2, log 10, uh, i4, which is dollar sign, that's epsilon, over d, which is dollar sign, over 3.7, plus 2.51 times x, which is this green cell, divided by i6, which is dollar sign, that's uh, the Reynolds number. So that's all we type. We give it a guess, we type the function, and then we can simply drag this down and it performs the iteration for us. Pretty cool. And you can see as we go, we started with five and by the time we're done, we've, cons we've converged to one, two, three, four, five decimal places. And if we continued the iteration, we would converge to even more decimal places. It turns out that this solution approach happens to be the same as solving the following system x equals f of x, and y equals x. If we solve for x and y simultaneously, then that's equivalent to finding where x equals f of x and y equals x. That's where x, basically, uh, where our function crosses the y equals x line. So visually, this blue line would be the function we're solving for. The orange line is the line y equals x. So if we give it an initial guess, like here, say 0.2, we have x is 0.2, then we evaluate the function, <coughs> f of 0.2, and then that f of 0.2 happens to be the value for our next iteration. So we go over to our next, where is f equal to x? It's right here, that's our new x. We evaluate the function, that's our new x, evaluate the function, new x function, and you can see how this iteration approach effectively marches between these two lines 
the function line and the y equals x line until they meet at this, uh, at this point, which is the solution where f of x equals uh, y equals x. You can always write your function in the form x equals f of x. If you have some form f of x equals 0 like we've seen, then just add x to both sides of the equation, and you'll have the form x equals some other function of x, and you can iterate on this. That can be done in several ways, and how it is done might affect whether it converges to a solution or not, and if it does, how quickly it converges. But for many problems of engineering interest, like the Colebrook equation, as we've seen, it does converge nicely, and all we've got to do is it's really simple to do. You just put in the guess value and then write your function in terms of uh, that guess and then drag it down and it will converge for you. <clears throat> so that is the first method. The second is Newton's method. With Newton's method, if we can't solve our problem, we solve an easier problem. With Newton's method, we guess the solution like, like usual then we're going to make a linear approximation to our function. So if the function were linear, we could solve it analytically, but it's nonlinear, so we can't. So instead, we guess a solution, <clears throat> an initial guess, and then we, instead of solving the real function, we solve a linear approximation to the function. That we can do analytically, and that'll give us a new updated uh, guess. We have to iterate because our next value for the guess won't be the actual solution because we're not solving the real function. We're solving a linear version of the function. So that's illustrated here in this plot for the function x squared minus 3. And you can see it plotted here. And we can approximate this function by a straight line at any point on the curve. The way we do that is by using a Taylor series. So Pretty much any engineering function can be written as a Taylor series, and that's shown here. And we just keep the linear portion of it. So f of x1 equals f of x0 plus f prime of x0 times x1 minus x0 plus these other nonlinear terms. And we're going to ignore the nonlinear terms. Now we're solving for f of x equals 0, so we set f of x1 equals 0 here. And then we can solve for our, x, our value x1. That is, we start with a guess, we want, a better, we want to update our value, so we solve this problem for our unknown, which is x1. So if we set f of x1 equal to 0, then we have this equation that we can solve for x1, and this becomes our iteration formula. So we pass in our guess, we evaluate f of x, the function, f prime of x, and then plug that in here to get our, our updated value. So the algorithm is, we guess, make an initial guess for the solution, evaluate the function at that point, evaluate the slope at that point, and then solve for our new point as x1 equals x0 minus f of x over f prime of x. And we just repeat until this, the problem converges. So here's an example. Let's solve for x squared minus 3 equals 0 and solve that for x. Well, f of x is going to be x squared minus 3, and f prime of x is uh, 2x. And so our iteration formula is going to be our new x equals our old x minus f of x old divided by f prime of x old. And we can code this into Excel very easily. That's done here below. So here's our values, values for x, values for f of x, values for f prime of x, and then next to that I'm just showing what's in the cells. So we type in a guess. Here I'm guessing uh, x0 is 1. Then I type in step 2, I fill in f of x. So this is just equal uh, x old squared minus 3. Enter, so we get a minus 2 there. And then we enter f prime, and that's equal to 2 times x old. There we go. And then we just fill these down. And then we step 4 is to enter the iteration value x new. So we go equals x old minus f of x old divided by f prime of x old. There we go. And then we're going to 
highlight these command 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 or control and then we uh, oh, that won't let me do it uh, we fill these down we just drag these cells down like so drag them down uh, if these were all next to each other we could just highlight the three cells and drag down but because I separated them out that doesn't work but you can see my initial guess was 1, then it became 2, 1.75, 1.73, 1.73, 1 1.73. So it's converging, and at the end it's got these values are the same, and we can see the function is practically 0. So this is pretty easy to do. You need the Newton's method formula. You give an initial guess, you evaluate f of x, f prime of x, and then you plug in this uh, iteration formula and then you just drag all three cells down and it converges it for you. Pretty nice. This is shown graphically on the right. So the blue line is our um, function. We make an initial guess. Here the initial guess is uh, about four, four and a half. And so we evaluate the linear version of the blue line is given in this black line. And so if we solve that, then this is our new value. That would be the solution for the, this linearized function. And then we use that as our new guess. So then we evaluate that function and make the, uh, the linear version of our blue line at this point x1 and solve it, and that gives us x2. And if we repeat that, it converges very quickly to the actual solution. So that's a pretty nice uh, feature. So both a uh, fixed point iteration, which is the first method, just write it as x equals f of x, then give yourself a guess, evaluate the function, and drag it down. That thing and Newton's method, where we have the function, the derivative of the function, we give an initial guess, we enter the function, we enter the derivative, both in terms of our x old, and then we drag these, and then we write our x iteration formula and just drag all three down. Both of those are pretty straightforward ways to solve nonlinear systems. And when Excel does a, a nonlinear solve using goal seek, for example, it's doing some version of something that's similar to this in nature. That is, you have a guess and it does some kind of iteration to update the guess. Uh, finally, we can. <coughs> Excel has a nice feature for solving large groups of equations all at once. And this can be done by setting up a so-called circular reference. So suppose we wanted to solve do like a goal seek problem, but we need but we wanted to do it for this problem instead of just having one value for epsilon d and Reynolds number, suppose we wanted to have like 10 or 20 or 100 values of the Reynolds number. Rather than solving this problem using goal seek by hand a hundred times, we can set up Excel so that it will do it for us. And the way that we do that is by setting up a so-called circular reference. So here I'm fixing D and Epsilon, but I'm going to let the Reynolds number vary. And I want to find uh, F for um, all of these things, for each Reynolds number. So the way that I've chosen to do this is we're going to call 1 over square root of f, that's going to be our unknown, so 1 over square root of f. This cell, we simply go, okay, this cell is equal to, because there's our unknown, this cell equals the right-hand side, so we type equals that, and in that cell, we type the formula that's listed. And this little arrow means that when you're typing this in, you're going to make it reference that. So equals minus 2 times log 10 of eps over di over 3.7 plus 2.51 over the Reynolds number, which is that, times 1 over the square root of f, this function. And when we do that, this makes a circular reference, and it will normally complain to you because you've had cell A depends on B, but B depends on A, which makes which is circular. So to get rid of the circular reference, we go up to, for Mac, we go to Excel, Preferences, Calculation, and then there's this Use Iterative Calculation button. We can click that. On a Windows machine, it's File, Options, Formulas, Enable Iterative Calculation. 
and then it will iterate until these uh, agree. And you'll notice both sides are the same. So 4.75, 4.75, and we have uh, these things equaling each other. And then we can simply take our two cells, and if we fill it down, it will iterate and calculate the whole thing for us. So pretty easy to do, setting up an iterative calculation scheme. And then once we have our solution, we can recover f by just going, okay, well, f is equal to 1 over uh, that thing squared. And then that'll get us back from this 1 over squared f variable back to our original f, just for convenience. And we can plot that, and you can see what the function looks like. And then if we wanted to change d to like 100 instead, it automatically updates this and does all that nonlinear calculation for us uh, without us having to go through Solver or Goal Seek for every one of these things. Kind of a nice feature.